Hello guys, welcome to Cloud Tech. So in today's video, we are going to continue our journey of T3. And today we are going to discuss a lot of questions about exception. So once you go through this video, you will be able to answer majority of questions that often get asked in your interview. Let's get to our first question, which is what is an exception and how to handle it? So exception is an abnormal behavior during program execution. So when your program executes, it is a series of statement. If you see, we have statement one through statement five. And while we are executing this statement, something abnormal happens. So that abnormal behavior often results in exception. Here you can see at line number three, something abnormal happened. And this is the line where the exception will be thrown. So what are some of the abnormal behavior that could happen? So consider that you are trying to run a program and you divide a number by zero. That results in infinity but your JVM is not able to handle infinity and uh, it will result in arithmetic exception. Similarly, if you are trying to read from database or write to the database and your database is down, in that case also you will get an exception. Uh, third thing is you're trying to open a file which does not exist. So that will result in file not found exception. Or if you're trying to read a file or write a file and you don't have permission to read or write that uh, file, in that case also, it will result in an exception. So now you understood what is exception. Let's try to understand what are, uh, how are exceptions propagated. So if you see here, we have main method. Main method is calling M1. M1 is calling M2. So main is calling M1. When we come to M1, it calls M2. Now there is an exception uh, which happens in M2. So if you see string str equal to null, and str dot character at five. So we are trying to read a character which is at fifth location. Now this will result in null pointer exception and we don't have any logic to handle it. So this exception that occurred in M2 will be passed on to M1. And we also see that M1 also doesn't have logic to handle exception. So that will go to the main method and main also doesn't have any logic to handle the null pointer exception. In that case, your JVM will crash completely. You see how the exceptions are propagated. It propagated from M2, it came to M1, it propagated from M1, it came to main. So this is known as exception propagation. And uh, there's a design pattern known as chain of responsibility. So chain of responsibility is a design pattern that is used for implementing exception propagation. So have a look at um, error message once. So exception happened in M2 then it came to M1, then it came to main. So this is how exceptions are propagated. Very important for your understanding. Let's move to the next question. How to handle exception? In the last question, we saw when exceptions are not handled, then your JVM crashes. So now we'll try to handle the exception. So exceptions are handled with the, the help of try and catch block. If you see, uh, there's a try block and there is a catch block. We write code in the try block because we suspect that while executing this code, something abnormal will happen. So that code we write in our try block. So consider this line, integer b equal to three by zero. And we know when we divide a number by zero, that will result in arithmetic exception. So this is the line where exception occurs. And as we are catching it in the catch block, so catch will get executed and it will print catch executes when exception occurs. So this is how exceptions are handled and your catch block is executed whenever exception occurs. Now, one important point to keep in mind. At this line, exception occurs. Whatever code is returned below that line will never get executed. So this is the line from where the control flows to your catch block. And the line below that exception is never executed. So whatever code is written here will never get executed. So this is very important concept in exceptions. So let's try to see our next question. What is finally block and why we need it? So in the last question, we saw how the code below the line where exception occurred is not getting executed. So consider this uh, try catch and finally block. So I create a connection here. So I get a connection from driver manager dot get connection and I pass the DB URL. Now I have the code 25 by zero. So this will raise a arithmetic exception. Now I write code for closing the connection, but we saw this code will never execute because the exception occurred here and that will result in 
connection not getting closed. So how to handle this scenario? This scenario is handled with the help of finally block. In case of uh, exception occurring or exception is not occurring, in both the cases, finally gets executed. So you can see finally is always executed. This is very important. Finally is always executed. If you want to do any kind of resource cleaning, then you can do it in finally. Now you see connection.close is a kind of releasing the connection or closing the connection where it should ideally happen. It should ideally happen in your finally block. So finally gets executed even when we return statement. Now, if you see, if I write a return statement here, for example, or if I write return statement in catch, in that case also finally will be executed. So even we are returning something, in that case also finally will be executed. So you have to remember three key points. Finally is always executed. If you want to do any kind of resource cleaning, then you have to do that stuff in your finally block. And finally gets executed even when you type return statement. So these are few of the points you have to remember. Very important for your interview. Let's move to the next question. When is finally not executed? So this might be a follow-up question from the interviewer. So finally block is not executed if exception is thrown from the finally. So while executing finally, if you are throwing any exception or if the exception gets thrown automatically uh, due to some logical problem, then your finally block is not completely executed. Okay. Now, if you try to write system.exit in your finally block, in that case also, your finally won't be executed completely. Or if the JVM completely crashes, in that case also, finally is not executed. Or whenever some error occurs, for example, your uh, application is running, your finally block is executing, and you get out of memory error. So there is no more uh, memory for your program execution. In that case also, finally is not executed. So these are the three scenarios where finally is not executed. So if you answer this, interviewer will understand you exactly know things about finally. Let's move over to the next question. So if you like our content, please like, share and subscribe guys. Uh, let's move to the next question. Can we write try without catch? Oh, very important. Um, yes, you can write try without catch, but you either need catch block or you need finally block. So if you don't want to include catch block, then you can have try your logic here and then you can write finally. So this is very valid. Uh, try with finally. Okay. So this is very important uh, in case you are writing your code and you don't want catch block. Okay. So you can write this. Let's move to the next question. Can we write try without catch and finally? So no, you cannot have only try block without catch or finally. You either need catch or you either need finally or you need both. So you are free to add either of them or both of them, but only Try block is not a valid uh, declaration. So if you do this, it will result in a compiler error known as syntax error, insert finally to complete block statement. So this is not allowed guys, only try block is not allowed. Very important for your interview. Let's move to the next question. Explain me the exception hierarchy, okay? So this is the exception hierarchy where at the top you have uh, throwable, and then you have error and then you have exception at the same level. So error is where you cannot, your program cannot recover from that condition. So that is known as error. So if you cannot recover at all from that condition, there is no reason to handle it. Exception is where uh, you get a chance to recover from the abnormal condition. So exception is further divided into two parts, the runtime exception and compile time exception. So runtime exception is also known as <coughs> unchecked exception and compile time exception is also known as checked exception. Okay. So at the top you have throwable, then you have error and exception at the same level. You cannot recover from error. So there is no reason to handle it. You can recover from exception in some cases. So there is a strong reason to handle it. The exception is again divided into two parts, runtime exception and compile time exception. A runtime exception is known as unchecked exception and compile time exception is known as checked exception. Okay. So now you understood about exception hierarchy. Let's move to the next question. Very important for your interview. 
what are checked and unchecked exception. So let's try to understand it. So whenever there is a checked exception, developer has to handle it at compile time. So if the exception is checked, you have to surround your code, which is throwing that checked exception with try and catch block. The developer has to mandatorily handle checked exception. In case of unchecked exception, developer doesn't need to handle it. So even if your code is throwing unchecked exception, the developer is free not to handle that exception. Very important difference. Uh, let's move to the second difference. If unhandled, then it is a compiler error. So if you don't handle a uh, checked exception, it is a compiler error. Compiler will notify you that you have to handle it. And if unchecked exception is not handled, no problem. No compiler error, even if unhandled. Very important. Uh, example of checked exception is file not found exception. Uh, if any code is uh, throwing or file not found exception, then you have to handle it. If any code is throwing null pointer exception, then no need to handle it because null pointer exception is your runtime or unchecked exception. Let's move to the next question. Generally, code can recover from this condition. That is the reason we are trying to handle it. Consider uh, a program execution, which is throwing file not found exception and because the file is not present. Now, if you try to create that file and run the same method, then code can recover. Code can find that file and recover from it. Or you can write a logic in your catch block of if the file is not present, then how to handle that condition. But in case of unchecked exception, if some code is throwing uh, has null pointer exception, then you know it is a logical problem. Uh, the object itself is null. Then uh, you don't need to handle that unchecked exception. Let's move to the last point. Any class that extends exception is a checked exception. So if you are writing your own exception, then if that class is extending exception, it is known as checked exception. We'll see that in, in future, in upcoming slides. And any class that extends runtime exception is unchecked exception, okay? Very important, go through this. If you want, you can pause your video and go through this once again. All right, uh, let's move to the next question. What is throw and throws keyword? So these are the two keywords which are very confusing for people who are just starting. So throw, throw is when you are throwing your actual exception. So here you can see I have throw new exception, cannot word age is less than 18. So if some condition occur, happens, if some condition is true, then I am throwing an exception. If you want to actually throw the exception, then there is a keyword known as throw. And if you just want to indicate that this method throws an exception, so in the declaration, you can see throws exception. So throws is a keyword, which is an indication that this method throws this exception. And to actually throw it, you use the keyword throw, okay? So now let's try to understand, throw is used to actually throw the exception we saw, and throws is used to indicate that this method throws exception. Now we'll go to Eclipse and we see, we'll see the demonstration. So throw and throws example, all right. Now I have this method put vote, okay. And this throws exception. So exception is what? Exception is a checked exception. So let me call this method. I'll call uh, put vote and I'll uh, add this as 20, okay. Now it gives me error. Uh, it gives me a compiler error. And what is the compiler error? Unhandled exception type exception. So I'll surround this by try catch and the compiler error is gone. So whenever we are throwing any checked exception, then we have to handle it by using try and catch block. Okay. Now let's try to uh, change the code a bit. What I'll do, I'll remove this. And uh, now I am throwing runtime exception. So runtime exception. Uh, we saw this, this is unchecked exception. And I, as we are throwing unchecked exception, no need of throws uh, keyword. So now what I'll do, I'll try to call this put vote, okay? And I'll pass 20. Now see what happened. There is no compiler error because runtime exceptions uh, are not needed to be handled. Uh, even if unhandled, there is no compiler error. So this proves the point that runtime exception, if unhandled, there is no problem at all, okay? Now we saw both the cases, checked exception and unchecked exception. Now let's go back to our uh, slide, to our next question, which is, what is try with resource? So this feature was uh, introduced in Java 7. And uh, there was a scenario where whenever in our try block, uh, we try to open any resource, then in, in finally, we have to close this 
that resource. We have to release that resource. That resource can be anything. It can be your connection. It can be your uh, file handle. It can be anything. So whenever we acquire the resource in try, we have to close that resource in finally. So that, this was a common pattern. So uh, some uh, Java folks uh, thought, uh, let's try to introduce try with resource. Now, what happens in try with resource? So in try, you write a resource that will be used in your try block. So here I am trying to uh, get a connection from my driver manager. You can see here, I don't have finally block. So even if I don't write finally block, what mm -hmm. will happen? This connection will be closed automatically because what I'm telling, try with this resource and whenever the job is complete, then release the connection. Even if the exception occurs, then also this connection will be released. So try with resource, acquires the resource and then releases a resource whenever the logic completes. So this is very important feature and you have you can utilize this, this feature because this is one of the best practices. Now, how this um, how this thing is released after uh, the code is completed. Now, there is something called as auto-closable interface. So connection uh, implements this auto-closable interface. And whenever anything implements auto-closable interface, that can be used in your try with resource. If you want, uh, we'll try to see if I have that example. Okay, I have that example. If I go to connection, you can see it implement it extends your auto closable interface. Okay, auto closable is there, and hence we can use this in our try with resource. Perfect. So let's move to our next question, which is an important one. How to handle multiple exception with one catch block? Okay. Uh, before Java seven, uh, there was uh, uh, no provision for handling multiple exceptions in one catch block. So if you want to handle SQL exception and file not found exception, then you have to write two catch blocks. Okay. But after Java seven, in Java seven, what happened? They introduced the feature when you can handle multiple exception in one catch block. Uh, as you can see, try, try. Uh, you are acquiring a connection. So at this line, uh, SQL connection might happen. So and at this line, file not found uh, exception might happen. You can handle both the exception by adding this pipe in between. And this will uh, tell that this catch block handles SQL exception and file not found exception, both of them. So if you want to handle multiple exception, then you can utilize this logic. Okay. So this is one of the important question, how to handle multiple exception in one catch block. Let's move to our last question. What is custom exception? So consider this uh, scenario. Uh, there are a lot of uh, inbuilt exception in Java library, but uh, there might be some cases where uh, uh, the exception that you want is not already there and you have to write your own custom exception. So to write your own custom exception, you have to extend from either exception class or from runtime exception class. Now, if you extend your exception from this class exception, then it becomes a checked exception. And we saw that checked exceptions uh, need to be handled. So if you want to uh, compulsorily focus uh, that developer should handle the exception, then you can make extend from exception class. If you want to make it a runtime exception, in that case, you can extend it from runtime exception class. And when you do this, uh, even if you don't handle this exception, then it, then also it is fine. Your Java program will uh, run compile successfully. Okay, so that's all uh, for today's day. We covered a lot of questions about exception. If you like our video, please like, share, and subscribe to our content. Thank you, guys.